I just wanted to turn back around. It's so stressful. Don't like this. The sea is providing for us. That's a Amazing. monster. With the mahi mahi that they caught, my first lobster that I catch. Woo! Wow, what a day at Black Key. We decided to see the world by sailboat. We sailed from the Great Lakes of Canada and made it to the Bahamas where the unexpected happened. Not able to start the engine. Let's go! Well, we're leaving the protection of the west side of the island with the predominant wind coming from the east so we're gonna have to cross this pretty narrow channel and right at high tide so right at slack so that we don't have any current to opposing the wind direction and we also need high tide because we need as much space underneath our keel to go through and a lot of narrow tacking within like 300 feet maybe as low as 200 feet so it's going to be an interesting morning before we make it up to the ocean. I think we're okay on this stack. There's a little bit of coral heads on the port side and there's a sandbar on our starboard. So it's super narrow <laughs> and we're at high tide so we've got an extra two foot and a half maybe. But I'm uh, sticking close to my little line. Body boats following our tail. Alex is navigating like a beast. I'm manning the main sheet in case we heal over too much so she doesn't have to turn up into it. What's the name of this cut anyway? That's Farmer's Cut. Farmer's Cut. Yeah, so that we can cross into Exuma Song. Thankfully we're at high tide because these extra couple feet are so important right now. Cruising at a pretty fast speed, actually, if we're going through a narrow cut. Maybe not the best choice. There's our cut. Nice and relatively calm. Woo! How much time? Like now. Going there. It's a bit stressful. We're doing great. The cut was a little stressful, but feasible. But then when we got out in the actual like cut section, it was pretty much a rage because there was some really steep standing waves. 
was who were trying to avoid, but I guess they blew hard enough yesterday night that the waves out on the Exuma Sound just build up like crazy. And right now I'm not really enjoying the sail, so it's gonna be a really, really long day because we're going like four knots. Our boat sails really well, but not in waves. In waves, it's like as if we're too light or something, so we just lose our speed every single wave. I wish we had calmer water. This isn't the funnest. Yeah, well, 36 miles to go. This has been a, a bit of a hectic, uncomfortable, and uh, probably one of my least favorite sails in a little while. Uh, we had to, while well, the main was already reefed, we had to take down the main at one point because we were healing over, over 30 degrees and going like three knots. So we were just losing all our speed and heel. And the sea state was way worse than it is now. It's calmed way down, luckily. And then maybe a half hour later, we had to put it back up because we were going back against our angle that we had already went. With just the head sail, we don't point into the wind very well. And now it's actually super calm and the sail's actually kind of enjoyable because the waves aren't nearly as bad. The issue is the troughs are really deep in some areas because the, the waves are closer together, maybe a three second delay between the waves when it was calling for eight. And on uh, Vinyasa's wind instrument, they were saying they saw 28 gusts and sometimes sustaining at 28. So we got a little bit more wind than what we were planning for. How are you feeling? But I'm starting to come around. There's just more mellow, so I had a bit of a nap. And eating a bit of those cheese crackers or, makes a big difference. So I do get seasick every once in a while. I just wanted to turn back around, but I didn't want to go back through the cut because it was raging in there. So it's just onward. But at least now this is nice. This is perfect. Yeah, I don't know exactly where you guys went. I think I thought you guys were that boat. We're in about 100 feet of water right now. We're going to get ready to taxi. Hey. Right now, we're hoping to just get at the anchorage right before sunset. If not, it might be a bit sketchy getting into the cut. Or it's not really a cut, but anyway, the opening to get to the anchorage that we're planning to stop at. We made it to Black Rock, or a glass cut, where we're going to spend the night before heading to Georgetown. Well, we're probably going to spend a couple nights here, rest up a little bit. This was a bit of a tiring passage. We ended up being like two hours behind our buddy boat because, I don't know, our boat just really doesn't like swell and being having to beat into the swell, it just doesn't work out the greatest. But we made it. We made it! It's 6 o'clock, so we beat the sunset, which is really, really nice. Seems like a decent anchorage here. Might be a little bit of surge coming in, but it doesn't seem too, too bad. We'll see tonight when we try to sleep. And the camera's alive! Because that big wave that crashed over the bar kind of got my camera and the tablet wet. But it seems like it's doing okay. Everyone's so worried about us in the Bahamas and our sailboat, but to be honest, I think we're actually pretty well placed because we have almost everything we need to survive the coronavirus. We've got power, water is one thing that we do have to go to land to get, but we've got tons of provisions and the sea is providing for us. This is the first fish I ever catch. A little glass-eyed snapper. 
We've been eating like kings, like catching crabs, lobsters, lionfish, dolphin fish, snappers, like so many different types of fish. I mean, we're even filling up their fridge with tons of different fish. Mahi mahi. More mahi mahi. Ah, uh, what's this one? This is Glass Eye and Schoolmaster and Mutton Snapper and Yellow Jack. Ooh, yum. And the nice thing about a sailboat is that it's actually easy to stay away from people. The only times we go to shore is to get water or some fresh provisions. That's about it. And with our engine still not working, well, we don't even need any diesel, so we're doing pretty good. <sighs> this is my old wetsuit from when I used to surf in Tofino on the west coast of Canada. And it's like a four or five, so it's a little too thick for here. I barely feel the water when I'm in the water. We ended up spending way more time than we expected at Black Cay. Spearfishing and snorkeling became a bit of a daily thing. Corey and Cody would spend way more time out because they had wetsuits. Well, we got a good bucket of lobster here. <laughs> Woo! Here, put your hands up beside it. Wow! That's a Massive. monster. That's nice, dude. That's yeah. sick. And, and Corey comes back from fishing. Oh, it was a long, long time, but I found a really sweet hole over by the, um, the center island, basically between where the two cuts are. And we got. Oh yeah! Oh, Look at that. The feast! Mm. So good. That looks champ. You're gonna have to explain what all of this is because I, I don't, I don't <laughs> know, can't. but it's delicious. So we have a softened style sweet potato corn salad with the mahi mahi that they caught on the way here, which is made in a spicy Caribbean kind of sauce on a bed of rice. So good. Delicious. This is a good pound and a half or so lobster. The biggest so far. That's just like one tail. Look at that. Yum. Two tails worth of meat we're gonna eat like kings. Look at the spikes on these. They guys. hurt so bad. I've got holes in my fingers from the last ones. Most days, the four of us would go spear fishing together. Well, we're going to get some food for the boat because we're not supposed to go to shore. Unless we are looking for necessities, we're, we're trying to get most of our food from the sea. That's the time.
Once Therese and I were too cold, we would grab one of the dinghies and bring back some fish. Cody and I would stay out for longer, looking for the best spots. Awesome. That's like my first lobster that I catch and it's huge! So we're gonna eat like kings again. This is the fish we filleted earlier. <laughs> it's so clear and there's no wind. I can see everything. The chain goes all the way over there. Oh, it was clear when I dove in the anchor, but this is insane. Having that calm of a sea state made it perfect for free diving. Usually, some areas near the rocks tend to be really bumpy with crashing waves, so we really wanted to take advantage of today. Catch of today, we have three lobsters and a gray snapper, I believe. Oh. Spear fishing with a pole is difficult. There's some deep ledges here, maybe 30, 35 feet. And I just got my biggest schoolmaster snapper ever. And I stoned him on the first shot, which means he pretty much died instantly with the shot that I took. I got a shark here. Oh, really? Woo! There's a shark in the water now. I think I brought him in. Holy my! Man. You guys are crazy. How many lobsters did you get there? <laughs> we got a few. We got dinner. Like four. I think we got four in this bucket. Four or plus five. the other one. So we got seven lobsters, and what's this guy? Uh, school snapper. Schoolmaster snapper. It's more orange. Yeah, he turned orange after I killed him, but he was a different color. Look at this. And this. And that's my little foot. Actually, my big foot. I've got big feet. We and caught so many lobsters and fish that the men are actually over at the catamaran next to us. And they're giving them some lobsters because it's kind of weird to say, but we have too much food. <laughs> so sharing some of it and might do a little bit of trading. Hopefully some cold beers. We're out of beers. So weird. Wow, what a day at Black Key. We caught so much food. There was a gray snapper a schoolmaster snapper, about seven lobsters, some huge ones also, so we are fully stocked up. The fridge is just so full, it's incredible. It was a pretty epic day. Lots of good catching, lots of good food, and it was fun swimming around and seeing all the cool fish and stuff. And now we have a beautiful sunset, and our friends Cody and Therese are gonna come on the boat and we're gonna have a really good supper, I think. Lobster salad followed by a creamy pasta with either more lobster or some fish. Not sure, one of the two. Which fish are we eating? Uh, should we eat the mahi mahi? Yeah, probably. That's the oldest one, eh? Yeah. Or we can do lobster meat in the pasta. Change of plans, we're going on our friend's boat because we did supper and dishes yesterday, so the third turn. It's actually really nice having some friends because I don't have to cook supper and do dishes every single day. So we trade it off, keep it uh, fresh and entertaining, and I think we're gonna do mahi mahi and lobster in the pasta. My bread today is awesome. Look at this thing. Oh, I'm so happy. 
Got pasta going, fish going, lobster salad, creamy sauce, beers. I don't know what we do not have. We have everything. What? <laughs> oh, oh, mahi mahi. Oh, yeah. Mahi mahi and lobster pasta. I don't think oh, yeah. we can get any luckier than this. I have cups. If it's one that's like a little bit funny or something, just like post it. Just have a little nit bit. But so yeah, we I'm have gonna a NASA say uploading video. Yeah. And we have the men trying to figure out what kind of fish they got. Yeah. Hogging the No, wifi. we know what we had. We just were wondering why. I'm thinking it just loses its stripes when it gets older. Yeah, I think so. Because it's the only one that really... This island was the perfect step to just go explore and walk. <laughs> Our first bonfire here. Cook some fish on it. We have and... mahi mahi. Alex's bar. Yes, welcome. Cheers. Cheers. This is how we do fast food. Welcome, Raphael Barth, to the Wild Gardens. Thank you so much for the support and enjoy the adventure.